Hello and welcome. In this video, we're gonna be going over how you can auto UV things inside of Cinema 4D. We are gonna be using the Houdini's auto UV tools uh, for this. So just kind of as a quick example here, I just got a little scene set up. I just got a sphere here that I have applied some noise to with another Houdini HDA. I have a video on that as well if you wanna learn how you can set that up. Let's go ahead and jump over to our BP UV edit. And you can see right now, these uh, this is how its UVs are set up. Because, because it's just a, a base sphere that has been unwrapped. Um, and just, it's just run through this surface distortion and then output. So with this auto UV, I've plugged in the, the model here and you can see that if I click on this and enable it, as to after it cooks through, you're gonna see that it has actually unwrapped it in a different way and unwrapped it based on the settings that I've chose. And if I wanna change how it's unwrapped, I just go back to the HDA. I can change any of the settings and how it's unwrapped. We'll just go to, uh, maybe we'll go to cu uh, cluster. I'll take a second for it to actually run through all the settings and, and actually cook the asset and then we'll see it updated. It kind of looks like it freezes for a second, but it's actually doing stuff in the background. So once it's actually finished all that, you can see that it's based on the cluster settings now, and it's unwrapped it uh, beautifully based on these, uh, the settings that I've chose. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to actually set this up. I actually had this open in Houdini as well, so I'm just gonna open a new file now. <clears throat> by normally you would be using the if you go up to the extensions and get the Houdini installer you're gonna be using Houdini 17.5 uh, for R21 um, but this actually does work as you can see I think yeah I do have it pulled up so it's running a Houdini version of 18 so certain things it looks like you can use uh, from 18 and output HDAs and then they'll still work in uh, Cinema 4D. I'm guessing that none of the new tools to Houdini 18 actually work inside of Cinema, um, but I haven't actually tried that out, but I do know that this works. So you can load up um, Houdini version 18 and do this. Um, the reason I say that is because you actually have to enable the, uh, the shelf for the labs. I think it's in here somewhere. Side effects labs, which I think um, I don't know why that's not checked. I thought I had it enabled, but um, you do have to actually download the the labs and, and actually have them installed into your Houdini version. Um, but in Houdini 17, it doesn't, or 17.5, it, it doesn't like give a, a clean option for you to do it. You have to do it some weird way. And I couldn't remember how to do that. So um, just Google it for Houdini 18 and you can just use that to to do this. So first we're gonna drop in a geometry node. And then by now I'm just gonna uh, assume that you trust that I know what I'm doing. Uh, so we're gonna just drop in an object merge node. We're not gonna show you what it is actually doing inside of Houdini because I basically showed you it inside of Cinema. So uh, you can just type in auto UV and then drop that in. It's the labs version auto UV. And then drop that into there and set the display flag to the auto UV. Now you don't see anything here, obviously because this object merge doesn't have anything into it. Uh, it's because we want to have the option to edit it in Cinema 4D. So we're gonna jump back up into the Geo node and again, go up to the edit parameter interface. If you've been following along with these tutorial series, then you understand that we do this pretty much every time. So we'll set those to invisible. We're gonna drag a folder over here and let's just name it settings. And then from here, we're gonna dive on back in. First thing we're gonna do is set up our object so we can input our object and we'll set that up. And then we will supply that and then we'll set a separator so that we can separate our, out our stuff for the UVing and the object merge. And then we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is drop in this method. So just click and drag and drop that in. 
And this is gonna allow us to actually change this setting right here, which has all of the different unwrap types. Now, when you change these, if you notice, if I change this, it changes all of these settings as well. So we wanted to make sure that it does actually change those settings. And the easiest way to do that is to just keep on dragging them over. So we're just gonna go one by one and drag these over. And if you realize, if I were to click apply, and I'm just gonna accept that for now, if I go up here, you can see that the settings are all right here. But if I change this, I have nothing. And that's because it's set to only show up when UV auto seam is selected. And how does it decide when, that, when to do that? So if you look right here, you click on that and you look into the hide when. So this is the, the code that's determining when that this is shown. So if I were to change this to three and then I apply that, it should, when I click on this, UV unwrap, yep, it shows up underneath there. So when we just drag and drop them over, it just automatically sets up all of these settings for us so that it shows up when it is supposed to. So that's exactly what we want. So let's just jump back in and we're gonna go just one by one and you don't need to drag this method over again since you already have it. Just drop over your, all of your settings and they'll only show up when you want them to. So when you have the appropriate setting selected, which is super, super useful. Um, if you ever wanna do sort, certain things by hand, you can just use this hide when method to actually change uh, when things are visible. So I'm just gonna drop in another separator real quick. And then you can also click and drag on these and drag, drag those in as well as that one. This one, we can't select it yet. That's because we have to actually enable it and then we can drop that in there and then you can go ahead and just disable that again and then you're all good. And then all of these settings are going to work appropriately. Um, already linked to an orientation mode. Oops, I already clicked on that one. My mistake. And then padding resolution. Now when we click apply, if we go back up to our geo node, we have all of the settings that we have inside of the labs auto UV. You can see they've all turned green. That means that they're all linked to a parameter. So you can just accept this and then you can go to right click and then go through the create your, your digital asset and save it wherever you want. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna worry about that. So we'll just jump back over into uh, Cinema and you can see here that I have just gone up to here and gone to Houdini Engine. Whoops. Actually, ooh, that's interesting. If you are in the UV edit, I don't think you can load. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so you have to be in like the startup or a different uh, section and then you can load an asset and then you can load in whatever you want. And then you can just drop in whatever you want. So let's jump back over to the UV edit so we can see what we got. So you can see it's doing what it's supposed to. And if I drop in another uh, another object, let's just clear this out first, just so we hopefully don't get any errors. I'll drop in this cube that I've kind of just actually extruded all sorts of weird, made a interesting shape. We can drag and drop that in there. And then it's gonna cook. And now we have it unwrapped for us. And then we can go through and still change all these settings to whatever we want. Um, so just change it maybe from cluster to auto seam and we'll see what we get with that. A little bit different results. So you can do all sorts of cool uh, things with this. You can really create um, really nice looking UVs to really quickly with this, with this setting. Uh, and then you can texture your assets super quickly without having to do a whole lot of work. I use this quite a bit in any uh, procedural modding, modeling that I do inside of Houdini. And I would definitely recommend uh, that you use this node if you're not using it already. And if you wanna stick inside of Cinema 4D, do all your modeling inside of there because kind of procedural modeling is a, another aspect of its own. It is kind of confusing and, and has to kind of rewire how your brain works. So if you wanna to stick to traditional modeling, uh, you don't wanna to have to worry about UVs, you don't wanna buy another UV 
package so you can do things uh, outside of Cinema 4D because uh, the Cinema 4D tool set for UVing, uh, at least in my experience, is not the best. Uh, I don't really care for for its UVing tools. This will kind of bypass all of that and get you some nice looking UVs with not a whole lot of effort. And then you can bring them into whatever whatever other application for texturing you want or bring them right back in here and do the 3D paint if that's what you want to do. But hopefully this helps you out. Uh, this is definitely a tool that I'm going to be using quite a bit if I ever do any modeling inside of Cinema 4D. Um, so hopefully uh, you guys use it as well and it speeds up your workflow. So thank you guys for watching. There will be a bunch more of these tutorials coming about about how to do certain different things inside of uh, Houdini that you can then use to increase your speed and better your workflow inside of Cinema. So make sure you guys subscribe. There is all these videos in a playlist. So if you want to check out the other ones in the playlist, please do so. And like I said, hopefully you enjoyed and this helped you out and have a good day.